this video addresses the geometry congruent standard number one, which has the learning objective, know the precise definitions of five vocabulary words. Angle, circund, circle, perpendicular line, parallel line, and line segment. The actual standard says, based on the undefined notions of distance along a line, distance along a circular arc, point, some things that aren't really relevant, though. Well, since this entire standard is no five vocabulary words, it tends to be fairly straightforward. You just got to memorize it, know it, and be able to progress from there. Now, in order to do this, I've tr created this chart where we can fill in our five vocabulary words. We need to know, oh, sorry, I did not have it on the pen. We need to know circle, angle, parallel line. This may run a little bit long, but perpendicular line. And ray. I'm sorry. I didn't write. Why did I write ray? That's not even the right one. And line segment. My brain was getting ahead of me a little bit. Now, in order to address these, you could grab a textbook, look them up. They'd be in the glossary. They would be in a number of different places. But I chose simply to say, here they are. So, oh, let's start off with the word angle. Which one of these seems like it would fit angle? Lines in the same plane that never intersect. Lines that intersect at a 90 degree angle. All points in a plane at fixed distance from a certain point. Part of a line with two endpoints and all the endpoints between. Two rays of a common endpoint. Hoping you noted it's this one. We can copy... And I'll take this out, and we'll just put it down under angle. There's our formal definition. Let's get the others. Instead of looking at angle, let's consider parallel lines. We should know parallel lines are ones that don't cross. The only one that talks about lines that don't cross are here. I do want to focus on one thing, though. It does say lines in the same plane. If you're talking about 3D space, there is another type of lines in three-dimensional space that could not cross. They're actually called skew lines. The reason that it says same plane is they have to be both on the same flat surface. Okay. Perpendicular lines cross at a 90. So we'll take this one and move it back over. The line segment should be able to get quickly because it's part of a line. And that will, of course, leave us with the last one. And I'm going to shift this upward a little bit so things will fit better. Lines. Shift this up. And hopefully we can read that better now. Then we'll take definition for a circle. So there we go. The standard is you just got to know these five vocabulary words. Of course, the question is, how are you going to how are you going to do that? You can just go through and memorize word for word what they say. I guess that's one way to meet the standard, but it's not the best way. Because if you just memorize it, there's a good chance that you could forget the stuff you memorized. It's a lot better to actually understand than to memorize. OK, so let's start off and say. A circle. Let's get the picture. All points in the plane that are a fixed distance from a certain point. That certain point is actually called the center. So I can grab 
a circle, base it on this center that I have, and we can see, coming up and down, that it's fixed. It may be a small distance, it may be a big distance, but this distance is locked into place. I'm sure you already remember from your previous classes that this fixed distance is actually called the radius, which was there. Or you could draw any other radii. What I'd like to encourage you to do, though, is to help you understand the formal, make sure you have an informal definition. What's like an intuitive understanding, the in-your-own-words understanding? Now, I can't tell you what this one is because every single person could have a different description in their own words. One of the common ones that my past students have said is a big round thing. And if big round thing helps them understand the picture, okay, that's helpful, but it's imprecise. The big round thing could wind up telling you it is the set of all points, but the big round thing doesn't tell you about the center or the radius. And it also leaves out in the plane. Because to me, a basketball is a big round thing, but a basketball is not in the plane. That's three-dimensional space. Well, after I've made that kind of point out, I've had students say, it's a flat, big, round thing. Okay, if that helps them understand the picture, fine. That's an informal definition. Please remember, informal is just to help you understand what it is. The standard is you do need to know the formal definition. And here we'll move ahead to look at an angle. Almost everybody will say, angle, oh, it's this thing. Okay, well, still, how do you describe it? One of the things that they typically leave off is you should have the arrows. Because if you don't have arrows, you're not actually doing rays, you're doing line segments. Now, admittedly, this is a mistake that gets made so frequently in mathematics that virtually everyone understands it. Even though it's wrong and people know it's wrong, they still just accept it and they would look at it and say, well, fine, this picture is still an angle. It's wrong, but we get it, we understand it, even though you should have the arrows to be correct. One of the pieces that people frequently ask, though, is they say, why do you have to have this term of common endpoint? Well, remember, the end point is where they're joined, where the ray ends. If you don't have a common end point, you could actually have this picture. Because they're not connected, you don't have an angle. This piece in the yellow does not qualify as an angle because the common end point criteria isn't there. Now, what's an informal description for it. Again, informal has to be you. You have to come up with your own. Because it's such a short definition, most students that I've had wind up memorizing the formal and the, they use the formal and the informal together because it's not quite as complex as some other ones. Bringing us to parallel line. Parallel line has, okay, well we have one, oh, that's not right. That looks like it came my marker. Marker, marker, line. Hooray! <laughs> Parallel lines lie in the same plane, so the same flat surface, and they never intersect. They should look like this. Now, using this software, it made it very easy for me because they're automatically horizontal. I could come over here and say, okay, give me a parallel line. And there is a risk that I could come up and do this piece and say, hooray, they don't intersect. My pictures aren't crossing. <laughs> These two, however, are not parallel. They're not parallel because you must remember, lines go on for forever. If we extended the drawing, and I'll try to get this to go straight with my sketch, 
it becomes very quickly apparent that if we extended it, they would cross. That's what makes them not parallel. It's not just having no cross where you could see it. If they cross anywhere, even way, way, way off into the future, it's still a problem. Also, keep in mind, it must be the same plane tells us the same flat surface. Perpendicular lines, our definition is to intersect at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so we have one line. There's another. We can see that they are coming together here and forming 90 degrees. A lot of people will also want to use pictures similar to these, where you can have that piece, but they would get rid of one of them and instead say, I wanted this to go the other way. These are perpendicular lines. Both are not perpendicular because we have a line, but this is a ray. You can't call them perpendicular lines if there's only one of them. That doesn't mean that we don't have perpendicular. We just don't have two lines that are perpendicular. We have a ray that is perpendicular to a line. The key feature, though, is that 90 degree angle. So take a moment. Think about how would you describe this informally? Last vocabulary word is a line segment. Well, we'd already noted this is a line. Well, to be a line segment, we need to have two endpoints. So I'll pick an endpoint. Oh, it's a little bit low. My orientation was not quite right. Orient, we have one and two endpoints. So a part of the line with two endpoints and all the points in between them. Basically, we're just filling it in. That's a line segment. Easily drawn because they look like this. Oh, that's still my marker. Let me, this thing doesn't want me to use this. There, there, there. Switch it to red. Oh, it still doesn't like me. There, there, there. And make an orange line. Oh, come on. Okay, my smart board's not working right, so let me switch over and instead use my computer. I'll grab that. There. There's our segment. So that's it. If you want to be able to do be proficient in geometry congruence standard number one, you just got to know these five words. You will need to know the precise formal definition and you should be able to draw the picture. You should be able to recognize these pictures, most especially where this will come into play. As you progress further in geometry, <laughs> diagrams and the pictures you see are going to get more complex. They're not going to be just a plain circle. There'll be a circle with a bunch of other stuff going on. You would still need to be able to recognize a parallel line, a perpendicular line, inside a more complex picture. If you were working with reading a word problem, you should be able to recognize these vocabulary words and their definitions inside a word problem. It could be something like you have two streets that are running parallel to each other. It could be something like there is a grain silo. You should recognize a circle. You could have pieces like a river it is crossing a street. And so the bridge would be perpendicular to the street, or parallel to the street, parallel to the river, perpendicular to the river. Those kinds of relationships are things that you should be able to recognize and remember throughout the course. Please don't think that it's just, I know these words today. You need to remember them and use them in a myriad of different ways throughout your entire study of geometry.